Well, there's the first day's work. Got the water manifold off. All the air supply on this side. So I can get to it a lot better. Got all the wiring, got all the wiring pulled to the back. Tomorrow we'll come over and start working on this side. It's mostly fuel lines on this side. And then uh, we'll be ready to pull the head off. Okay, starting on the second day here. We'll try to get the exhaust manifold removed. And uh, got all the wiring harness pulled back. This obviously had a a uh, air actuated fan on it at one time. The air was ran to the front and had a switch on the back of the water manifolds. So there's a bunch of extra stuff up here we're gonna get rid of. Looks like they replaced it with uh, just one without a clutch or anything. Looks like it came off of an international because they painted all their stuff red. But uh, hopefully we can get the exhaust manifold off. Those bolts sometimes can be a little bare to get to. One of them's underneath the governor spring. But uh, I'll work here a bit and take a few more pictures and uh, I'll update you in a second. Well, I got this exhaust manifold off. Two bolts were really rough. One broke off. One stud broke off. Two of them in the front. Looks like somebody decided to torque them a few times because it was leaking. I'm not sure. All of the cylinders are pretty wet. Uh, probably can't see it. Number one, one side was dry, but still had some oil in it. That's probably enough for today. The, uh, just got the rocker arm cover sitting on top of there to keep some dirt from getting in it. But uh, the head, minus the, just loosening the head bolts, is ready to be lifted out. So, quite a bit of room in this truck. So, trying to figure out what's best to get an engine hoist in here, bring the service truck around, and put the crane on it. But uh, we got the head off. And it seems like they've been running it a long time, burning some oil. Lots of carbon. Didn't see any signs of... Any signs of... Uh, coolant. Everything was dry when we got inside. Some of the pistons don't look too healthy on top. I had to clean them up to really see. All of the liners are actually really good shape. You can see cross hatching on all of them. I scraped a little bit of the carbon off of that one. That's why it looks a little bit like that. Liners actually look pretty good. Did take all the pistons out and clean them, but the back two look pretty good. That one there was really dry. It's a little wet now because well, he's wiping things down and it actually got a little bit of coolant came in when we lifted the head, but uh, it was dry before we smeared that around. Back two cylinders, like I said, look pretty good. The rest of them, uh, uh, pistons, I don't know. We'll have to get them out and clean them up. Looks like they ran it quite a while, I believe, with, with it burning oil. And uh, not sure why it was burning oil yet. If you look at the sides of the pistons, it doesn't look like any combustion was getting past them. But we'll fill the liners and see what it looks looks like. Okay, making a little bit of progress here. Uh, got all the liners out and I've had them in and out two or three times because um, I got some new old stock liners. Um, in these Series 71s, the earlier ones, all the part numbers were the same for the liners they just moved where the stamping was on the liner to indicate one two three four this block wasn't stamped anywhere and every liner i took out the stamping was at the top oh, they all measured as if like a, a good two would fit and some of them a three uh with, with the bore scope or i'm sorry with the bore gauge so i took a gamble 
all the new old stock ones I found were so covered in cosmoline, folks couldn't really tell you what they were. So I shopped around and I thought, man, if I buy seven, I'll have some to dance around. And uh, measuring some of these, even though it's stamped a two, it's closer to a three in my opinion. Uh, cleaned them up the best I could to get the uh, the uh, um, cosmoline off of them. And you can see if it's stamped up at the top or in this area, it's a number one. If it's stamped right above the exhaust ports, it's a two. If it's stamped right below the ports, it's a three. And down here is a four. I, I, don't, I haven't seen any fours. Uh, like I said, all the ones I took out, you can see right there is one I took out. It's upside down. And you can see the stamping on it is, is right up against it. But they're all the same part number. They just moved where that stamping was. So I found that in a 96 manual. Um, so as I went through it and measured them, uh, you know, like I said, most of them were between a two and a three anyway. So luckily, I was blessed. Um, when I bought seven, I got all number twos except for I got two number threes and uh, give me a, a good assortment to dance around and get really nice snug fits. Um, see here, number three was one of the looser cylinders and I was able to get a number three to fit in it. It's a number three size because the stamping is right below the exhaust ports. And Here's the number two, stamping are hard to see. And then we get over here to number five, it's, it's still a number two. And here's the one that was off. Number six was one of my smaller measuring cylinders and it was tough to find a, a fit for. And even though this is marked number three, was really probably at the top of the range of a two. Um, actually, actually three quarters of the way up. Um, but it fit really nice in number six even though it was my tightest cylinder so if you get some new old stock ones you know i don't know you know maybe when i scrubbed it to get the cosmoline off i scrubbed this one better but you know i really tried to just use a lot of hot water and degreaser and you can see i didn't really scratch them any to, to change the size so but um i'll try to post a picture of that diagram but so far, I'm, I'm really happy with the way these fit. Uh, the, uh, the one that's, I got another number three over there that won't fit in any of them. I'll just keep that for future. But they're all the same part number. Like I said, just, I got an assortment of twos and threes. And um, you know, if you look in the manual, uh, if you have a number one bore, which I think was the most common, uh, a one or a two will fit in it. So I think they're just trying to get the, the tightest slip fit that you can. So I'll try to post that diagram, but uh, we're well within the tolerances. You know, the used is, is a two and a half thousandths, but these, I've done a lot of slip fits and press fits, and, and these here, they're, they're zero to one thousandth. They're, they're snug. Some of them were, you know, with oil on it, you had to really clean the oil off. They're nice slip fits. I might have, uh, number one I'm guessing is zero to half a thousand, but the rest of them is, is zero to one thousand. Uh, it'd be my, my best guess. Try to keep everything the same temperature. Um, it's 50 some degrees today. It's a pretty good day to work with it. Your oil doesn't get too thin. But um, I'll try to post more updates later. We're gonna take these up now and build the uh, piston sets.